maybe go to Gary. How, what, so what's your experience, or what was your kind of journey in? Well, for me, it was um, my late 20s, back in graduate school, uh, epiphanous moment walking towards campus and discovering that all of my suffering uh, was illogical. I mean, my body was healthy, wife, two kids, um, and yet I was suffering enormously. And as I was next ascertain, it was all caused by my self-referential thoughts, which I call blah, blah. And so I didn't know anybody who had even looked at this before as a problem, but being an empirical scientist, I decided to set out and see if I could get at this DIY, uh, somehow doing it myself and trying to understand it. So I tried a bunch of personal things of all sorts to try to understand what thoughts were. Got into Zen, came across the teachings of Ramana Maharshi, which were very important to me, and a 14th century Japanese Zen monk called uh, Basui, who was very similar, and they all taught the same approach. What am I, where am I, who hears, what is this? Trying to unravel the self-referential narrative. And after a lot of doing this, uh, one day, doing an asana flow, I went up into it one way, and page turned, and just like a leaf, uh, my thoughts stopped. And they've been basically stopped now for 14 years. Uh, there are, uh, there's no, uh, change in functionality, there is just this deep, still uh, presence, sweet, deep, still presence. Okay, so I want to come back to that again, also the thoughts, but why don't we go to Lisa for, right? So you really have no sense of, uh, there's a Lisa doing something in here. There's a doer controlling experience. You don't have that feeling. There's just life happening. There's just life happening. Does that sound, can you guys relate to that sentiment, that sense that there's no, agent in here doing something, just, that your life just happening? Is that how it feels? Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, that's something we talked about kind of yesterday, okay. was you know, this idea of the Buddhist being compassionate. I, mean, yeah. I, have, I have no sense of compassion. I mean, you're just fully, as Lisa was saying, fully present. And if you're fully present, then something comes out of that that is of a whole different character. I mean, much more appropriate, creative than anything I could have mentated, thought up as how it should look like or what some book said it should be like, hmm. you're actually uh, much more useful and it's much more efficacious to just be fully present right now with what's happening. And are you surprised when an action then comes out of that? Are you surprised by your own actions ever? I mean, they're always much better than I could have thought up. So there is a surprise then. Yeah, and, 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 and the, the thing of, of uh, like I talk about business meetings, you go into business meetings and the same thing happens, is, is you, you get something that comes up that is so much smarter than I am just comes out of no place and you just after a while learn to understand that in fact you're not running the show no you're not running it but you're doing a very poor job of it so you just get out of the way and just let a much much better answer come out whether it's helping quote helping people or being in a business meeting interesting does that sound relate to that can you relate to that Tim or Gary yeah I think one of the big surprises to people I work with and myself fairly consistently is that things like sexual drive sex sexual drive falls away. Yeah, I've heard that. And it really does dramatically change. Because in the past, what you had was... <laughs> just like less and less you said sex, so we started giggling. It. Sex. <laughs> it was just like the way that you just uh, went into it. <laughs> it was awesome. The thing is, the sexual drive <laughs> was very good. It, it, it falls away for many people. And, and, and I try not to script this in, and I just see as they progress along how, how it's going to go. But you find out that a lot of sex, for example, is mentally driven. It's, you know, it's, it's mentated, it's massaged, it's thought upon, it's, it's amplified. And as you begin to lose your eye and your attachment, in fact, that falls away. It gets less and less prominent. The same thing happens with a lot of interactions with your close partner. If you've been, or any close relationship, I mean, you and the other person has come up with a series of ways in which you interact. And those can change. You've changed. And you don't respond in the same way you used to respond. This can be very difficult in a long-term relationship because, in fact, you, know, you aren't responding the way they're used to having you respond. And this becomes a very challenging thing. Many people I work with see the same thing as difficulties in their relationships. I mean, they, many have go through a lot of stress in this way. Because the partner can't compete with this new state. 
you know, you're in some kind of a transcendent state they don't know, haven't experienced, can't compete with, can't understand, and you're spending more and more time there. So it can be very difficult for a relationship that way. So how did you work with that in your relationship? Well, you, d you just try to be sensitive to what's, what's happening. You can see things are changing. You can see your sexual desires are changing. You can see your attachments are changing. You can see the way your relationships operate have changed. It, it all does, if, if you really let the eye fall away and there's nobody there to hold the other end of a lot of emotions, then those emotions really lose their potency and they really, the nature of them changes because there's no one to hold the other end of I need you or I want you or you know, I love you. There's nobody to hold the other end of that. And so it's just whatever it is, but it is not anchored in any kind of an agent that holds it. It's interesting. I've, um, I've heard that from quite a few people. Gary? Yeah, and I, 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 I differ from both of these folks, obviously. I mean, it, 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 it really does change. I mean, it fundamentally changes. If there's no I sitting in there, uh, all of those self-referential, for me, when my self-referential thoughts fell away, self-referential desires fell away, self-referential fears fell away. I mean, my world fundamentally, absolutely, unequivocally changed. And it hasn't changed back. That's what non-duality means to me. That's how I experience it. That's my, how my life operates. Fears I had in the past just fell away. Mentated fears. I still don't step in front of buses, but the mentated fears just don't hang in there. The same thing with desires. There's just no mentated desires. They just don't arise. You can still recognize a form as something. You can see the rising of something, but it just doesn't go anyplace. And my life is fundamentally dramatically changed. What about, is there, do you ever have an experience of fear? Is that, or they, is that completely gone? Fear seems to be gone. Hmm. I mean, especially, you know, the fear, like, I don't walk off cliffs. I walk to the edge of a cliff, I can, I can recognize, I, I shouldn't step off this cliff. And so I step back from the cliff, or I don't step in front of a bus. Hmm. But as far as imagined fears, they like projected, oh, well, this is a dark place, and you know, there's tigers over in the corner. That just doesn't, doesn't come up, because there's no eye there to hold the fear. There's nobody to go out and grab the storyline and make something out of the fear. So here's a question for you. Was there anything that was surprising to you that when you found yourself in this place that didn't seem to fit up with what you had maybe read in spiritual texts? Oh, it was all surprising. It was all surprising. I mean, I, and I, I had practiced for, since they invented dirt, uh, till this, <laughs> this happened. It took a long time. I wandered around in the dark and I was lost for much of my journey. Hmm. But when it happened, it was like, whoa, this is... Whoa, it was nothing like what I had expected because it was so much uh, deeper, more vast, more uh, still. I never expected this awesome, staggering stillness that gets deeper and deeper and deeper. I did not expect that. I did not expect to have my desires fall away. I didn't expect to have my fears fall away. I was told thoughts would stop. I didn't think they would stop. I thought, <laughs> I thought they would like, you know, trickle down and we could have, but they stopped. There's still a few times during the day when I get very tired, my blood sugar gets very low, they can start up again, that's my best indicator that my blood sugar is low. But other than that, it's, it is really quiet, very, very still. Okay, well here's a question for all you guys. Gary, what, you have kids. What, did, you, did it change the way you relate to them or what you said? Yeah, it did. I, 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 <laughs> my, my last big attachment, I, I was you know, letting go of attachments was, ended up being my practice. That's what I really still teach. Mm -hmm. And they were, my two daughters were my last big attachments. And so letting go, not, of, not throwing them out, but you know, letting go of my being attached to them in a way that they belonged to me uh, was a big step, and I did that. And, and uh, I think they would say now that I'm probably a better father than I was before. We were very close, but, but now when, I, when I'm around them, with them, with my grandkids, I don't have a, an agenda, a storyline, a the place they have to be, something they have to do, a way they have to uh, control, comport themselves. It's just, it's very open and present and now. There's no place else to be, other, there's no place else the brain wants to be other than right here, right now. And so whatever manifests is, seems to be much more useful to them, and you don't know, than what it was before.
Do you ever manifest giving advice to your grandkids in, in the way that uh, Tim was talking about? No, I don't. I mean, I, I, I really don't uh, give advice to anybody, even the people I work with. I, I'm, we very much meet right there. And uh, I don't charge anything for my teachings. And so we really do meet as, as one. It's, there's none of this going on. And we, we meet as just uh, whatever. Travelers on the path. That's that's too too judgmental into it. But we're just people sharing what what have you experienced and what have you experienced and what are you learning, and what problems have you had? Oh, I had that problem, and here's something you might think about doing there. Mm -hmm. uh, something I didn't have, and that's why it took me so long because I didn't have anybody to talk to. I just mm -hmm. wandered around in the dark for a long time. Mm -hmm. Earlier, I asked about the synchronicity piece. I'm wondering for you, did you, was that uh, something you experienced? Well, I, I haven't stopped being, uh, not I being, but the imperial sci empirical scientist has still continued. I mean, I, I talk from science, I learn science, I repeat science. So I work with, I'm in five, subject in five studies. So I know a bunch of scientists, many of my students, people I work with are scientists. So, you know, I, I've kept that, that part, of it, part of it going on and it does appear as if, but it only appears as if, the universe does support this. I mean, I've told people many times as I was coming up along the way, this long, long path, I really felt that, that each time I surrendered, something held me. And the more I surrendered, the more I was held. And when I surrendered totally, I was totally held. Very interesting, because what that suggests to me in some way, it's almost as if the world is slightly tilted towards somehow the positive, as opposed to it being totally neutral. There's something just inflected towards positivity or love in some way. And you often hear, I mean, I guess it's sort of like one of the big mysteries in the path is like, it, is that true? Is it the case that there is something holding us? Well, there are verses in the Bhagavad Gita, I won't quote Bhagavad Gita to people, but, but they're really, oh, I don't know, but I won't bother. But, but there is one, uh, there's a verse in Bhagavad Gita that's much talked about. Ananyas chintai and tomam yejanas parupasattu, which says, as I surrender uh, something, I, I will take care of you. I will hold you. And it seems to be that way. Although it, it can be a storyline, it can be made up, but it sure felt like that to me, that I was being held every step of the way. Gary? <laughs> Yeah, a lot the same way. I mean, if there's nobody here, then intimacy, the word intimacy doesn't mean anything. I mean, my being intimate with something doesn't happen. There's nothing here to hold the other end of intimacy. And so what becomes then is it all becomes one thing. And as I said to the other, yesterday it was, I mean, I really, I really see everybody as the divine. It really is, she's just dancing. Everybody here is just the divine dancing. And, and so it isn't like there's me different watching it. It's just she's just doing all the dances. She's the player. She's the actor. She writes the script. She's the conductor. She runs the play. She turns the lights on. She does everything. And so there isn't a question of you, you can't separate yourself enough to be intimate. Hmm. That's a, for me, that's the wrong word. So here's a question for you. Would you bring everyone to this place if you could? If we could understand if there was something happening in the brain that supports the state and we could figure out how to neurofeedbackly induce it with some you know, temporary lesion or a permanent lesion, would you bring everyone into that place? We talked about this at mm -hmm. breakfast this morning. Um, I, I, many people couldn't, can't hold it. And that's, that's not judgmental, that's, that's my experience. And so, uh, we've talked before, I mean, is you can develop powers to open people. And, if, and my experience is if you open people and they aren't ready for it, it doesn't help. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's confusing, it's disruptive, they don't understand it, they can't hold it, it creates you know, all kinds of things. And so, just let that go. And so I, I, I don't think it would be, and you'd like to say, okay, if you could all just come for a day and spend your time in my space and then go back again, um, would you be happier? Because if someone came to me and said, look, if you want, could you take the blue pill and go back? I think that would be really not okay. 
I mean, I, I, there's no, no even sense of ever wanting to go back to what it was before. I can't even conceive of doing that. This is so much better than anything I ever experienced before. But if you brought someone into it for one day and then they had to go back, that might be actually the cruelest thing you could do. And exactly, and that's, that's what I'm kind of wandering around into, is if you went back from this and couldn't get back here again, it might be a very cruel thing. Uh, okay. So, so that, that's the other way to, to spin this thing. So if that's, given that this is the case, and given that you guys are operating from this place, this very human place, what would you say to everyone here who might want to get there, who might be suffering in their way, they're in their, they're in their I mean, what, what can you say to them? I'm saying it's absolutely worth it, go for it. Absolutely, you know, put all your chips on the table and there's nothing that'll touch this. I mean, put all your chips on the table, work as hard as you can. I know it's, you know, it's, it's you're doing, working, but there's nothing, you're not gonna waste a second. I mean, this is really, really, totally worth it. What did you say, Tim? Gary, anything? Yeah, trees are way cool. I mean, they, they, there's, there's something about trees, but not just trees. I mean, all, all of nature feels, I mean, you, you can look out and see everything is, is her dancing, but you can, there's also an energy about it, like a vibration of some sort. You could, then it does feel so much more alive than, it, than as I can recall it used to feel. I mean, everything is just, and it's like that all the time. You know, it's like being, a, I, I'm, a, I'm a complete virgin on psychedelics, so, so it, people have described it to me, you know, it's, like, it's like a trip. I mean, it really is a whole different perspective on nature. And nature really is, uh, it's also her dancing, but it's beautiful. It's yeah, awesome. I have to say, uh, in relationship to the world, um, you know, half the planet lives on $2 a day. Mm -hmm. The global middle class live on 3,000 to 5,000 a year. 800 million people go to bed hungry. So it's, I, I, I'm practicing and I'm really immersed in wanting to be non-dual. And yet the Kali Yuga is here. Mm -hmm. And I just wondered if you had any thoughts on that. Great question. Yeah. yeah but to, 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 for me, I, I think we have to get a new operating system. I think if we're going to get out of the Kali Yuga before, before our species is done, uh, we're going to have to get a new operating system. The one we have right now is 75,000 years old. Uh, I think it's time for an OS 2 or an OS 3. Uh, we, we can do it better. Uh, we don't have to completely get rid of this eye. We can use it as a thing off to the side. But I think we have to get out of an ego-motivated existence. We have to get rid of those ego-motivated desires. We're destroying the planet, and our species isn't going to make it much longer. So I think we have to do something dramatic. And I, I don't think this is escapism. I think it may be the way forward. Why? Because, because your, your, your ego-based desires, your need to exploit the environment, you need to have a, big, a giant car, a magnificent house, you know, six, six of this and ten of that, and all this pile of stuff in your... That goes, that goes away. Because you don't need those things anymore to make yourself feel okay. You're okay already. You're perfect already. And I think if we don't get something like that, we're going to be in a lot of trouble very fast. And you could also say you, it's easier to get out of your own way now to actually do something. Absolutely, about the and you problem. can do something. You can be really appropriate without some kind of story, some script coming into it. You're fully present for what has to be done to not have our species go away in about another hundred years. Hmm. Tim, uh, 